Guys, how's it going? I hope everybody's having a great week. Today I wanted to talk to you something um, that is near and dear to my heart, and it's something that honestly I'm trying to get better at. Um, and it's really, it's all about working smart. So I heard a great quote or a great formula that says that hard work plus smart work plus consistency equals results. And I couldn't agree with that more. Then after I took a look at the equation, I realized that the first two, uh, the hard work part and the consistency part was quite fixed. And the reason it was quite fixed is because it requires energy. And energy is a finite resource. So obviously without these two things, you can't attain something that's definitely worth attaining, meaning, meaning like a meaningful goal. But where you could really tweak and you could really make a difference is the smart work. Because smart work requires intelligence and it requires open-mindedness. And with the right open-mindedness and the willing to talk to people and, and, and get mentorship from other people and again, having an open mind, intelligence really is limitless. So I'm about to go into it and talk about what I mean. So when we talk about smart work, I took this from a, another basketball coach and he talks about the anti-grind. And we talk about the anti-grind, it's something that is completely unathletic, meaning that when you, th when you think about uh, anybody successful, you see them waking up at five in the morning and they're working all the way up until maybe 10 at night and they basically have no life and this is the grind, right? But after a while, because this, uh, results require consistency, what happens is you burn out. And I've burnt out, and I've known many, many uh, successful people who have burnt out, and it's really interesting to talk to them about their journey about working 16, 18 hour days and how long that lasts for. And it's usually not a long period of time. So recently I've been reading a lot, and I've been inspired by a book called The 80-20 Rule, which is uh, Pareto's Principle. Basically, the 80-20 Rule means that 20% of your investments or your efforts uh, get you 80% of the results. So when you think about that, that means the majority of things that you need to do to be successful are very few. There's only very few things that you need to do in order to get the majority of your results. So when you talk about the 80-20 rule, real quick, um, it doesn't have to be exactly 80-20, it could be 70-30, it could be 90-10, if you can believe it or not. So that means that you can actually spend less time doing meaningless stuff Okay, like going on your phone and, and, and checking your email all the time or checking social media all the time. This, this is something that I struggle with as well. When, if you have a scheduled day, you can really dial on the one or two things that really matter for that day. And out of um, experience, it's the one or two things that you probably don't want to do that day. That's a good indicator that it's probably the most important thing to do. Now, when it comes to this 80-20 principle, it can apply to absolutely anything. It can apply to investments, it can apply to sports, it can apply to business. I'm going to use it in terms of a basketball term, but hopefully if you're not in basketball, you'll bear with me to see where my point is going. So say for example, this is great because we just talked about goals, right? So year one, say you have a sophomore in high school or a, a four, and in Hong Kong they call them form four in high school, and he's during the off season. He sets a lofty goal for himself, this basketball player, and he wants to average eight to 10 points a game. Now, you'll know by that goal setting that we've talked about before, that that's an outcome goal, okay? So you actually have very little control over that goal. Um, anyway, he sets a very lofty goal of eight to 10 points per game, and the action that he's going to do is he's going to spend seven hours a day working on drills by himself, okay? Just to give you a little idea, this person used to be me. So I, I was this person at one point, and I'm gonna tell you exactly what happened. Year two came around, and I only added two points a game to my, to my, um, to my stat sheet. Okay, rather than reevaluating and doing the things that I'm going to suggest to you today, I was insane. What does that mean? That means doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Now, I don't expect a 15 year old to be able to understand this, but if I were to go back and I, talk to, I ask myself this question all the time, I would create a SWOT analysis, so that's strengths, weaks, uh, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. I need to evaluate my game first, right? If I was to evaluate a game, now this is not necessarily me, say this person was weak and unathletic. They can't shoot a guarded shot, okay? I'm just giving you different situations. And they can't read the game well. well 
Let me think, is working seven, in, uh, seven hours a day by yourself going to get you those goals when you did that and you only added two points per game, right? Very likely if you do the same thing, you might only add, uh, add one point per game after that, okay? So then year two comes by. This was, this is a smarter guy than I am. What he did is like, all right, you know, I understand that outcome goals are very important. At the same time, I understand that goals need to be lofty, but they need to be achievable. Because if I can attain that goal, then I'm riding on momentum, and we can set an even loftier goal. He understands psychology, this, this smart guy. Okay, then he goes and talks and, and thinks about his process goals. Okay, in order for me to go five to, ten, uh, five to seven points per game, what do I need to do? I've evaluated my weaknesses, and I have decided that working out by myself does not work. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm not even going to give myself seven hours a day, actually, because Consistency, I know, is part of that formula to get results. And guess what? I cannot work out seven hours a day because this is actually me. This is what happens when you work out seven hours a day. Yes, it is, okay? Eventually, that's what's going to happen. So, this smart guy decides that he's going to only work on by himself one hour a day, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, okay? Then, he's going to meet up with some friends, maybe like four other people, five other people, three other people, and we'll play two on two, but meaningful two on two, because he's already talked to his coach, and he's been like, what am I going to see in the game so that I can use my friends and really get a lot of reps, maybe if it's a pick and roll, or it's a, it's a, it's a, a way screen, a dash, whatever it is, whatever, a flare screen, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a corner shooter, he's getting really specific, but now he's playing with other people because he knows that he can't shoot shots guarded, so he needs other people there, and at the same time, he can't read games. Then, every day, he's gonna spend one hour playing five on five, which is the actual game of basketball. In order to get bas uh, better at basketball, guys, you wouldn't believe this, but you actually have to play the real game of five on five basketball, okay? So, that's what he's going to do. He's also noticed that he's not able to read the court well. So what he's going to do is he's going to ask his coach for all the tapes, or oh, this is how old I have all the tapes, all the clips from YouTube, right? And he's going to go and analyze every single one. He's going to go and analyze people who he's going to see next year. He's going to go analyze himself and what he can do better, the movements off the ball he can do better, and he's going to be like, Coach, where, what do you need from me next year? Okay, this is going to be the next thing we're going to talk about, guys. And hopefully you can see what I mean. Even if you're a lawyer, how does this apply to you? We're getting super specific. You need to take a hard look in the mirror at yourself. Or if, if you can't do that, get a friend who you trust. Take a hard look at, uh, at the, in the mirror at yourself and evaluate. What are you good at? What are you not good at? What are the opportunities that you have? And what are the things that are in your way to prevent you from getting your lofty goal? In life, I have, I, my philosophy is that you want to play to your strengths and minimize your weaknesses. So when our friend Jeff goes and works out by himself, or he goes and plays with his friends, or he's playing five on five, he is going to work on things that he knows his coach needs next year so he can get more playing time. The more playing time he gets, the better chance that these points per game is gonna go up, okay? So what he's gonna do every workout is he's gonna spend 80% of the time expanding on his strengths. Then he's gonna spend 20% of the time minimizing his weaknesses. To be honest, the majority of the people would switch that the other way around. I do not believe that. And a very good example for you in the basketball world is James Harden, who only goes to his left, right, but you still can't guard him because he's figured out all the ways on how he can go back left, okay? Um, another thing is that everybody needs to understand this. Nobody wants anyone who's average at everything. That applies to investment banking, that applies to law, that applies to students uh, for the most part. The colleges want to see what you're really good at. That's why they ask you to do a major, and it definitely doesn't apply to the basketball court. So say for instance, um, what, what, is, uh, what is Jeff good at? Um, he's kind of average at everything. Okay, no. I'm gonna get myself a good point guard. I'm gonna get myself a good, uh, I'm gonna get myself a good shooter. I'm gonna get myself a good big man, right? You're not gonna go into um, an investment bank and, or a law firm and be good at, no, it's not good, average at everything, right? No one wants that guy. No one wants that guy. So then, we have to understand this, is that how can we work smarter? Here's the equation, I believe in the equation, but in my philosophy, guys, there's one thing that can really, really, really be obtained, 
I mean, excuse me, adjusted. And that's working differently, working smarter, measuring and evaluating the results that you've gotten and adjusting from there. That's kunai that we've talked about before, adjusting, okay? But now I'm making it very clear. How, instead of spending seven hours a day, how can I do it in three and get better results? Instead of spending in three, how can I do it in two and get better results? I'm not saying that volume is not necessary, it is, but how do we work smarter? The reason that I came out with this video is because I fell victim to all of these things and I wanna make sure that you guys don't. I want you guys to leave a comment. I want you guys to give me some feedback. I want to hear about your philosophies on how to work smarter because that's definitely something that I'm trying to do in the new year. Thanks guys.